Today's expedition is to a special place, a sacred place. Come along. Okay, I'm going to read my instructions from the gate, head northeast up the road, which I just did. At uh, four tenths of a mile, you'll come to a flat spot where the road will cross Dry Gulch Creek. Uh, that would be right here. This is the informal trail to the site. It looks like an old 4x4 or ATV path and goes steeply uphill and as of 2014 it was unmarked. Well I think this is it. A path going steeply uphill. Steep indeed. Be warned it goes up about 600 vertical feet in a short distance. I will be taking periodic breaks. I don't think the camera does it justice. That's just that's like straight up. Got a storm developing up there now too. Okay, I've been away from Colorado for too long. I've been climbing all the way up that trail and I still have to climb all the way up that trail. It's up a few feet, rest, up a few feet, rest. Anyway, the air is thin and the climb is steep. That's the grade right there. I gotta be getting closer because the instructions I have say that you're just about there when the trail turns to the left. And I'm hoping that's it. It looks like the trail turns to the left right there. Hopefully I'm very close now. I got fooled by wishful thinking. Uh, that was not the end of the trail at all. I gotta be getting close because that looks like the top of the mountain right there. But this appears to be the steepest part of the climb. Holy crap, fooled by wishful thinking again. I wasn't at the top. More to go. I'm gonna get there. Something waiting for me up here and I don't know what it is. I feel like I'm climbing to a hilltop monastery. Something is up here, some kind of message. Oh my God, it just keeps, just keeps going and going and going. There are some white stones. I need to keep looking for white stones. Not gonna lie, I got thoughts about turning back. Holy crap, I think I'm really close. Right, right there, right there is a pile of rocks. They're not white, maybe they used to be white, I don't know. This climb is messing with my head. I don't wanna give up, I wanna get there. I need to go up and find out what those pile of rocks mean. Rocks here and a trail heading off. I don't think this is it. Maybe it's a shortcut. I'm going to consult my directions again. I'm not lost, I just don't know which path to take. This is a very well worn path. I don't know if it's correct or not, but I'm taking it. getting the hail on me. Bad hail storm. Taking refuge under this tree, I hope lightning doesn't strike it. 
hear the thunder. So I've been exploring the debris field. I'm underneath one of the few trees that didn't get knocked down by the plane as it flew into this mountain. Uh, certainly there is evidence of the plane crash right here as you can see how uh, broken this tree is. And I've been debating whether or not to do any commentary up here because I regard this as a sacred site and because I think there's in truth very little that one can say about such profoundly moving things. It's as if the mountain and the thunderclouds want to do all the speaking. I think the vlog will be kind of silly if I don't at least describe where this is and what it is. And perhaps I can open up to some of my respectful thoughts about it. I was moved to tears at one point. I found a hat up on the hill, a hat that was torn and shredded and, and I put my fingers through the holes in the hat and I did begin to cry. This place is, a, is an appropriate memorial uh, for anyone, I think, frankly. It's strangely beautiful. I mean, as I'm in a hail and rainstorm, uh, the sun is actually coming out. And here's the sun up above me. I think the hailstorm has quit, so maybe I will uh, venture back up to the debris field. This incredible debris field is still here. The aluminum does not rust. It remains in remarkably good condition. And this metal now becomes part of the landscape. The silver metal, the silver bleached trees, the twisted metal has very little personality. But this is the stuff that gets me right here. A hat, torn, but he, she, was a living, breathing person just like me, dead at college age. I think it's important not to think too much when visiting a place like this. It's more important to me to experience it with the heart. There was a tremendous fire up here, as evidenced by the once molten and now solidified metal. And this charred area where vegetation still will not grow 47 years later. Here's a piece of fuselage or a wing. This plane got trapped, trapped in this canyon. This mountain here and the other mountain on the other side. From what I understand, this is called a box canyon. And so indeed, apparently the plane got boxed in. Couldn't pull out. Some of the survivors reported that uh, they looked out the window and the, uh, was startled to see that the top of the mountain was higher than they were prior to impact. But I didn't come up here to analyze this thing intellectually or forensically or to get too much in the head about it, you know. Uh, there is a uh, meditation practice called charnel ground practice. And that's where one visits uh, a cemetery or a charnel ground, which is where bodies are disposed through burning. And by putting yourself into a, a place like that, you connect with the people who have died and you connect to your own mortality. You develop a relationship with your own death. I think it's safe to say that I personally am no longer afraid of death, at least not uh, intellectually or spiritually. The brainstem portion of me is still worried about death. You know, if a bear came down the hill and the bear was coming after me, I would try to protect myself. I would try to survive. You know, I still have, I certainly still have that instinct. But uh, intellectually, I'm not afraid of death. My son died a few years ago, and uh, that was my first uh, very intimate experience with death. Some of the details up here just amaze me. Here is a football helmet 
face mask. Uh, all that remains is the wire metal on the inside. The outer plastic is melted off. Here's a knife, still in very good condition. There's a name button here. Uh, it's in the mud. I'm going to clean it off just enough to read it. Uh, never forgotten, Thomas Shedden. This was his face mask. This was his knife. Here's his name. Here's the memorial that somebody made for him. <laughs> I'm trying not to get choked up here. <laughs> I'm going to do this. And I just realized that somebody brought some sunflowers up here. So somebody brought some Kansas sunflowers to this site very recently. I've been up here for several hours. I just wanted to uh, spend as much time up here as I needed to. Much of it just uh, spent in meditation, just being here. I don't know why I lived long enough to visit this place, and I don't know why these kids died up here. It's not my practice to make reasons for things. I don't believe in afterlives, I don't believe in reincarnation, but I do believe in being reborn moment to moment to moment. I feel that coming up here has been a rebirth of sorts. I won't be the same person walking down the mountain as I was coming up. And the 31 people who died here will uh, forever uh, remain in my heart. And uh, you know, for those of us still living, we are all dead men on leave. Therefore, it is important to live and to stop being afraid of death. And when I stopped fearing death, I began to live life more vigorously. So I think another thunderstorm is coming. Perhaps my time here is done.